Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 45, where you email me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And if I don't read them on Strange World, which is most likely because everybody calls in on Strange World night, then I will try to do them here. But be patient because I get a lot of emails and I have to go through a whole bunch and, and I don't read everything on the list, obviously, because some are too long and some are just too involved. Anyway, let's get right to it. First email going all the way back to uh, July. It's called, titled Flat Earth and I Believe. Hi, sir. Thanks for the great and insightful information. We have to be eternally grateful for people like yourself for the mammoth endeavor of trying to awake the masses. I would like to know if you have a transcript of the documentary to translate in order to make a replica of the documentary in Portuguese and transfer the information to my people and hopefully more. Thank you very, and I look forward to hearing from you. Warm regards, Paulo Navula. And yes, what he's talking about is Flat Earth Clues. If anyone wants to translate it into another language, I mean, one, you can go to enclosedworld.com and just go to the transcripts page and you can just cut and paste from there if you want. But if you email me and say, hey, can I get it in word format or whatever, I'll send you a quick zip file with all the Flat Earth Clues transcripts. And you can do with it whatever you want. You don't need anything written permission for me, just translate it. It's been trans translated into a lot of languages. But if you want to do something special with it, by all means, have fun with it. This one's called Tides Eclipse. I think I figured something else out. Hi, Mark. Lenny from Connecticut. I was wasting time looking at my phone when I went to my app, Aaron Dover's Astrolabe. Something just stared and spoke to me. The sun and moon are always 180 degrees from each other all the time. So how would the solar eclipse happen? especially when we would see the moon in a blue sky right next to the sun. I don't think so. I think Rahu and Ketu, the tides, just look at this app and you will see it staring right at you. Email me back if you would like to discuss. Thanks, Lenny. P.S. That app lets you go day by day, hour by hour. Cool. Awesome. So you guys want to check that out? Check out uh, Aaron Dover's Astrolabe app. This one's called Montreal, Canada. Hey, Mark, and he spells it with a C, which is fine. Thanks so much for being available. It's really nice. I suppose you're still small enough to find time for your emails, but I doubt this will last, last much longer. The first time I saw your documentary was about four months ago. I found it very interesting, but at the time I was still on the Illuminati stuff and could not imagine anything more revealing could be in store for me. How wrong I was. You're a great individual, Mark. I will never forget you as being the one that showed me the truth with your documentary, which, by the way, was very well done. I'm sure you worked hard on it. It's the best one out there, I assure you. Hmm. Oh. I wish I could see you in person. I have so much to say. I found myself after an accident with a lot of free time at home, and this is what got me into all this Illuminati BS and then followed by the Flat Earth Theory which is no theory, but a proven fact for those who wish to see the truth, of course. Okay, just a few questions, if I may. The asteroids, falling debris, or whatever items that may find, it way, it, find its way onto the planet, how does this fit into the dome issue? Uh, to answer that, just, look, it's just, you're just throwing rocks into an aquarium. It's part of the system, meteors and falling debris, if, if they actually hit the Earth. Next, well, with the internet and the amount of people waking up to this flat Earth, it's a matter of a very short time before the truth comes out and is accepted. This will undoubtedly bring chaos to the population, and I think the Illuminati will do all in their power to prevent this. What's to be expected, do you think? I thought this might be an appropriate time to play the blue beam card, huh? Yes, that'd be a good one. If you want to spin this in a certain direction, you're going to have to come up with some sort of massive distraction, uh, whatever it's going to be, a you know, celestial event, world war, huge terrorist event. It's got to be bigger than 9-11, I know that. That's what I think they're going to do. 
Anyway, if you can find a little time for me with these two questions, I'd appreciate it. Meanwhile, keep up the great work. And again, I thank you wholeheartedly for all the work you put into your video. Your efforts will forever change my life and the lives of all I love greatly. I feel I have a friend and a friend like you is always appreciated immensely. Have a great day, Mark. Yours, J.R. Beliveau, or Ron for my friends. And that's fantastic. He's out of Montreal, Canada. Thank you, man. It's good stuff. This one's called Quiz Question for the Conference. Hi, Mark. I've been a bit busy cruising 33 days on the flat Pacific, but I'll call in soon with a couple of flat, flat observations from the cruise experience. Question, how high does a person have to be to see the curvature of the earth? Uh, answer, two doobies and a line of coke. <laughs> Well, or quite a few other drugs I think could help. But yeah, you're never going to get high enough to, to actually see the curvature. Never going to happen. Only the space agencies, only the military will show you that stuff. This one's called Astrophysics Jobs. Hi, Mark. Was listening to your show about industrial valves and was wondering what jobs are out there in astrophysics and what is their salary range? 30 pounds to 60K, which I laughed at seeing it's a billion dollar industry and you would think these guys would be one of the most critical skill sets and paid according, apparently not. Love your show, keep up the great work, Andy. And he's linking an article, let me click on that. Oh yeah, astrophysics jobs in England on indeed.co.uk. Hmm, interesting, I suppose you can actually look up astrophysics jobs anyway, anywhere and see what the guys are getting paid for that stuff. Thanks. This one's called important, Flat Earth Meetup in Dubai. And let's see here. Yes, I can promo for your Dubai meetup. And hopefully I did this. Location. Yeah. This was back at the end of July. I think I already did the one for the Dubai meetup. So you guys want to do a meetup in any, any city. And in fact, I've got two that are coming up that I've got to do trailers for. And I just did another one for Colorado where uh, Globusters and ODD are going to be attending. Uh, but if you want to do it in any city, just let me know. Just send me the details of where you're going to do it, and I will try to whip up a quick quick promo for you because I've got the templates already built out for it. This one was out in Dubai, and I'm pretty sure I did it. Well, that seemed a long time ago. This one's called Before I Die! Exclamation point. Mark, as a former science teacher who was in college when you were born, I'd love to see, and so would you, a video with these attributes. Flat Earth with an ancient subtropical to temperate Antarctica complete with the Titans. Neil Adams expanding Earth along with Dr. Brown's explanations on Noah's flood and the new Earth along with some of Ryan Wyatt's footage on the Exodus. Throw in some ancient 300 waterfalls from the Nile into the Mediterranean Valley. I'm sorry, 300 foot waterfalls from the Nile into the Mediterranean Valley and a few other anomalies, and it would make for a great show I'd love to see. Wouldn't you? Just a thought for you to share with others from R.J. Anderson. Hmm. Yeah, some, some great visuals there. Good stuff. This one's called NASA Engineer. Mark, hello, my name is Grant Farrell. I am also from Washington State, but I'm currently living in Texas. I move furniture for a living and was told by my boss not to discuss my flat earth beliefs with the customers anymore. Fair enough. So I talk to customers that way they have engineering, surveying, military and flying experience. This gentleman I'm on the job with as we speak says he was a plumbing and electrical engineer. He was employed by NASA from 1964 to 69 with a top secret clearance. He was telling me that he worked on the lunar lander and the moon mock-ups where they practiced the moon landings. He said it was done in the center of NASA in Houston and also in Florida. I don't think he was in on it, the deception, but has a vast knowledge of a lot of things that were going on. I'm going to be on the job and around this gentleman all day. If you happen to get this email today, are there any questions you would like me to ask him? Remember, I'm a flat earther, but today I'm acting like a fan of the NASA space program. Respectfully, Grant Farrell. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're ever talking to anyone from NASA, just play it really delicately and say, was there anything, to, you don't even have to talk about the flat earth, just say, was there anything to you that looked like they, if they wanted to, they could fake it, you know, that, were they ever trying to pull off anything in, in a simulation, in like a practice run, where the footage looks so good that they could actually pass it off as the real thing, 
That's what I'd, I'd ask him. This one's called Two Questions Regarding the Builders. Dear Mark Sargent, otherwise known as Father of Flat Earth. Uh, awesome. That's from the Denver Post, by the way. I was wondering what level adva of advanced technology are the builders according to the Kardashev, which is the method of measuring a civilization's level of technological advancement based on the amount of energy a civilization is able to use for communication or how technology technologically advanced they are. Uh, so, okay, are the builders okay? What level? I have no idea. I, what scale can we even? I don't. I don't know. I, I have not seen that scale as far as technological advancement. So I, I don't know how you would measure the creator's level of technology. But it's got to be multiple octaves higher than us. Uh, and second question: I talked to a geologist last week, and he said that the Earth is four point six billion years old. Do you believe that's a ruse, or could the enclosed world be that old? No, it doesn't have to be that old. If you're going from civilization to civilization, and each civilization is, what, 5,000 years, give or take, then, or less, I mean, ours, I think, was longer than most, then you don't need it. All you have, I mean, the aging, the carbon dating can be can be simulated from, from one stage to the next. So, no, maybe not even millions of years old. Why, why would it? I mean, you can make it look that old, sure, but I don't believe in the carbon dating system at all. This one's called Flat Earth Sun Location Question. Hey, Mark, my name is Tone. I've been a flat earther for a little over a year. I'm a big fan of yours. I live in Southern California and just visited Michigan and was thinking about the sun's position. Right now, it's 11 a.m. in Southern Cal, and the sun is, I guess, west of the 12 o'clock position, or at least how I'm describing it. In Michigan, it would be 2 p.m., and the sun would seem to maybe be further east of the 12 o'clock position. My question is, how does this happen if the if Michigan is east of me, but the sun seems west of me? How, does this make any sense? Is it merely perspective? Th thanks. Keep up the good work tone. Yeah, it is merely just perspective. We don't know the type of op optics they're using for the sun projection, uh, but it's, it's definitely not within our realm of technology. Kind of like the last question, which is, you can only describe it. I know it doesn't make sense to you. Remember, we can only describe it using whatever's around us right now. No different than if you went back even 150 years and tried to describe a, a jumbo jet. How, how do you describe it to somebody? How you know when they're when they're looking at it? It's it, it's so many levels above them that they have a really really hard time with it. Uh, this one's called just some NASA fakery I found feel free to read on air and use hey mark again huge fan of your work I was reading some yahoo science news or the funny pages as I like to call them yesterday on my phone when I stumbled onto an article that literally made me laugh out loud the article was actually a website the verge and here's the link and let's see just look at the title the title is called a satellite captured a video of its fellow satellites rocketing to space uh-huh It'll, it'll just look at the title. Anyway, I just read through the whole thing and had some questions. One, how big is a dub satellite? Two, how high was this satellite? Three, is there any propulsion systems on board? Uh, answers, mind you, a lot of this crap gets super techy sounding. I just pretend to know what it means. And so there's like big, as big as a shoebox. It's about 350 miles up. And are there any propulsion systems? No, there is none. It does, however, have a reaction wheel to adjust the attitude. Wow. Uh, so all that being said, how does the do they maneuver a shoebox size camera 350 miles above Earth at the alleged speed of 15,000 miles an hour with only been a, being able to control pitch, roll, and yaw? Yeah. Uh, I get. I also get this thing is supposed to be equipped with some pretty good cameras, but how do you explain the view that? looks like it was taken from a weather balloon not a satellite here's another question how the hell did a camera that snaps a picture from one frame a second ever catch a glimpse of a rocket traveling anywhere from a thousand to four thousand miles per hour yes i looked that up too at the second stage separation of the soyuz is traveling at four thousand miles an hour here's where i got that info uh and he goes i'm calling bs yes the rocket may have been launched out of sight not to space but the satellite carrying the camera 
was and could never be what they say it is. The internet is a scary place. When you look hard enough, it's all right there in our faces, but the general masses are too busy with 9 to 5s, tweets, snaps, and what people might think of them if they don't conform. I could ramble on forever, but that's why I had to share. Use it and keep on spreading the good word, my friend. Keep it flat. Keith from Michigan. Thank you, Keith. Some great info there. This one's from Paul on the Plane. And Mark, just want to make sure you are aware of a new series Archer Sage and I launched. I think it'll make some waves. Lots, lots, lots more to come. And the series is called Season 1 Faking Space Image Analysis Series. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a big series that he's got going. So, yeah, if you want to check it out on YouTube. Season 1 Faking Space Image Analysis Series. Sorry it took so long for me to read this one, Paul. But as you know, I have a lot of emails. And I, I met Paul on the plane down at the Seattle Mixer with the Marble and Patricia Steer. This one's from Kathy. It's called Zen Garcia lives in the Atlanta area. He lives in Winder, Georgia. My understanding. Oh, that's more of a confidential email. Sorry about that. It's Ooh. about Zen Garcia and um, uh, talking about this was actually the, talking about the conference. This one's called Flat Earth Meetup Locations. Hi, Mark. Ethan and I are part of the Flat Earth Community Group with Chris Truth Seeker. Do you have any plans on a Flat Earth Meetup anywhere in Ohio or nearby? Many thanks, Marla. And yeah, actually, there. well, there's a, in fact, it's happening right this second. There's a Flat Earth Meetup conference thing that Rob Skeeb is doing in Cleveland right, right now. In fact, I think it started yesterday. And I think it's finishing up today, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, we've, there's been other things that have happened in Ohio. This one's called Flat Earth Water in Dunkirk Movie. Hey, Mark, please read on your Q&A show. Have you seen the new Dunkirk War Movie? There's some great flat water in some of the dogfight scenes. Keep it flat. Jason Fox. Uh, no, I've not seen Dunkirk yet. I've heard some great things about it so far. as Several people have uh, recommended it to me. I will check it out when I get a chance. So, Dunkirk. Check it out, guys. This one's called Picture for You. Hey, Asard, saw this on vacation in New Hampshire. Pretty rad. And it's a picture of... Oh, yeah, it's a flat earth map. Uh, kind of an antique one. Also, a friend of mine had the pleasure of going to Red Rock Amphitheater in Colorado a couple weeks ago for Slightly Stupid. Great reggae. And the venue looks amazing. I'm so jealous. Have you been there? Let's fill it with flat earth peeps for next summer. Steve. And yes, I have been to Red Rocks for a couple different concerts. The first one I can't remember, it was, it was sort of like a reggae thing. I went with a whole bunch of people. And then I saw, believe it or not, back in the day, I saw the Beastie Boys at Red Rocks. And that would have been in the early 2000s. This one's called Fata Morgana is the Curve Important FE Horizon Mirroring Effect Explained. Mark, in many of my videos, have been showing the same mirroring effect. Even showed a couple of days where there was great visibility, and you can clearly see that the wake is what blocks out the lower lower hull. My video was really good observations of this occurring. I offer all my videos for others to use, but maybe I'm not reaching out to the right people. I don't know. I've been talking about the mirroring water plane for a long time with very few views. Sad, and that's from Wide Awake, and he sent this to a whole bunch of people. So I will revisit this and. Hopefully, oh, oh, and I actually mirrored his stuff, the Fata Morgana. Yeah, absolutely, and I linked to his, his thing because he initially sent it to me. Yeah, it was good stuff. I like the Fata Morgana. F-A-T-A space M-O-R-G-A-N-A. -A. Okay, this one's called Dragonfly Paint Hat. Mark, it's so awesome you read my email. I will be at the Zen Garcia debate in Duluth, Flatlanta. Let me know when you're in town. It would be great to meet up before. And that's from Ash. And um, hopefully I met him down in Atlanta. Hopefully I did. I meet a lot of people. But hopefully I met that guy. This one's called Australian Woman Circumnavigates Antarctica. G'day, Mark. Love your work, mate. I've been listening to your work since July of 2015, loving the fact that every day the hammer comes down on the heliocentric model. I'm waiting in anticipation for the truth to finally come out. I found this link in our Australian news. 
And it was solo sailor Lisa Blair arrives in Albany after Antarctic circumnavigation. I just can't understand what agenda they are trying to push with this story. Do you have any thoughts as to this story even holds any water or if she's just another silly paid stooge trying to prop this farcical ball earth illusion up? Keep up the amazing work, Mark. The people of the flat earth are in debt to you. Kindest regards. Anthony Clark from Australia. And yeah, hey, what are you talking about? Why would you run this story? It's a great story to run if you're a globalist. And that is, oh yeah, we had a person that circumnavigated Antarctica. You know, a, a woman who circumnavigated Antarctica. That means that you put that out there, it's like then you can say that Antarctica is a continent. I don't know if she's got any video to back it up or a time lapse. That would be actually better. This one's called Inside the Artificial Universe That Creates Itself from the Atlantic magazine sent by Catherine and it's a link you guys can say you can look it up in Atlantic magazine but you can probably look it up by title it's called inside the artificial universe that creates itself a team of programmers has built a self-generating cosmos and even they don't know what's hiding in its vast reaches yeah it's like the biggest video game of all time it's so large that even if you had multiple players coming in from different planets they would the odds of them running into each other or like winning the lottery pretty lonely place if you ask me this one's called the other space agencies or flat agencies hi mark folks talk about talk all about nasa but that is not the only space agency the u.s has the u.s has nro which is the national reconnaissance office they supposedly control all satellites in space to keep losing altitude for commercial or private satellites. They supposedly control all retro rockets. This is what I was told when I worked on satellite communication for the Department of Defense in Afghanistan. I questioned why the dish is not pointed directly up in the sky. We were directed to point it at a certain low angle in the sky. The GD told me a story of Russia intercepting supposedly U.S. satellite communications by microwave towers back in the days because I asked why the dish is pointed so low to the ground. When I was out of Afghanistan, there had been times I was able to ping external websites such as Yahoo.com and received a very low round trip latency time. It was like around 250 milliseconds or much lower versus normal 650 to 800 millisecond days. ICMP does not get cached. I am an expert in the communications field. It's really response times. I don't recall specifically how low the response times were, but it was well below 250 milliseconds. Websites were appearing much faster during this period of time. It's not like Afghanistan was a local Yahoo server. It takes time to travel to the server and respond back. We use nothing else but satellite communications. We did eventually set up a microwave shot years later for the commercial network only. No military traffic went over the supposedly separate microwave shot. The locals ran a fiber network years later. I will be at the conference in North Carolina to talk to you. I got a flight uh, and a room, but no tickets still. Mike from Hoboken, New Jersey. Uh, hopefully he will get tickets. And you know what? I'm going to put this in because there are some more tickets that opened up. Only a couple dozen. But I will send him a thing there. And... Oh, yeah, and he, he does a follow-up here. Oh, I forgot to mention NRO, NRO agency gets more funding than NASA. NRO donated two high-power telescopes that were more powerful than the Hubble. NRO claimed that the 2X telescopes were just sitting on the shelf collecting dust. If NRO had two expensive telescopes better than Hubble, we should be questioning how much money NRO is receiving. Hmm. All right. That's interesting. This one's called the Pyramids of Egypt. Hi, Mark. I was watching a video on the Egypt pyramids being a possible hoax last night. I went today to check online to see if I found some information. I found this info below. The year says 2015. Would you say this is a possibility? Maybe built in the 1500s? The article says 1900s, so I am not sure. Have you looked into it? Since you're the conspiracy guru, I just wanted to check your opinion. Uh, and the article is called, One of the Wonders of the Ancient World is Made Out of Polyestering? Huh. In 1901, to effort to boost tur tourism? Nah, I don't know about that. I'm I, Look, I was there. I, that is one of the, the few conspiracies that I can actually see. Look, I was there. I, I walked all over these things. And they were absolutely stone. Uh, very large blocks of stone. And they've been there for a long, 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 long time. To the point where I was saying that the, the, the 
the descendants, the people that live in Cairo, the modern Egyptians, had nothing to do with the construction of this because their city's in shambles. I mean, it's a third world city. So tell me how the greatest architectural achievement that mankind, our civilization's ever done, tell me how that got pulled off. So no, I do not think the pyramids are fake. Now, are they not as old as we think? Eh, I don't think they were built in 1901. All I can tell you is I was there. They're absolutely made out of stone. Walked all over them. And you can. You can walk all over these things. This one's called the Flat Earth Store. Hi, Mark Sargent, the voice of Flat Earth. A Flat Earth Store, maker of the 3D glass sky dome, has moved to a bigger and better domain of rflatearth.com. There can be found the popular 3D glass sky dome, just like the one I sent you along with the pin button badges and FE poster maps and more. I have also made available for free a download a high-res Gleason azimuthal equidistant map so that anyone can, uh, looking for a copy can find it there. Here's a YouTube link to a one-minute video of the 3D sky dome that you might like to include in one of your slideshows. Love your work. Best wishes, GP Gardner, uh, which is now at rflatearth.com. And yes, I ran the video on my channel, and it used to be Flat Earth Store, and it's a cool little model. Cute, cool little 3D. In fact, I'm looking at it right now. Brass housing, uh, super high quality, and it's small. You can put it in your pocket. I'm going to be carrying this with me to the conference in November. Moving on. This one's called Good Upload. Mark, I like the pilot pick. I agree. I have always known the proof is road, building, bridge, Railroad construction and engineering in general proves this claim as well. And that's from Banga Assad. Thank you. Some quick emails this time. This one, however, as soon as I say that, of course, I opened up an email that is not quick. This one's called The Eclipse on August 21st, 2017. Hi, I'm Mark. My name is Julian, and I am 44 years old, Romanian. I became a flat earther in May of 2015 after my brother linked the Admiral Byrd interview on YouTube in November 2015. At that point, both my, me and my brother were into Nazi secret base and Antarctica conspiracy theory, and he linked me that video just because of this. But on the right-hand side, there was a video suggestion. It was about flat earth. Yeah, like I would ever waste my time on such a crazy theory. I was an avid sci-fi movie addict and in my adolescence, a sci-fi avid reader. The point is, I was a globehead. However... It was a rainy Saturday in London. I lived in London between uh, 2014 and 2016. I decided to amuse myself with that Flat Earth video. Man, was that a mistake. I did not amuse myself at all. My entire life did a 180. I had enough background in math, physics, chemistry, and some basic background in astronomy, and I decided to debunk that Flat Earth. And I tried it four to five hours a day for the next six months. Short story long, six months later, in May of 2015, I had to admit it, our world, world is flat. Since then, I kept trying to debunk the flat earth. Because I am human, I have to admit that I might be wrong. I started to learn more about the globe model, trying to find anything that works. It's been over two years since May of 2015, and I am still looking. The reason why I sent you this email is because a couple weeks ago I decided that talking with family, friends, or talking about Flat Earth on Facebook is not enough. Hence, I started a new blog. I had one about the World of Warcraft, talking mainly about the auction house. <laughs> nice. Uh, last week during Globebusters live feed, I sent a link to an article on my blog to Bob Nodell on Facebook, asking him to take a look at that article I posted. He did, and he mentioned it on the live feed, also linking my article in the in his video. You can easily check this. Globebusters video, where my article is linked in the description, was posted by uh, B.O.B. on his channel. On July 24th, 2017, I am mentioning this because clicking on a link on this email is basically unwise. On my blog, I posted an article today about the coming eclipse under the title, The Eclipse who destroyed the globe. My blog is called Flat Earth Education and is hosted by WordPress. Please take a look at that article, see if the math is right, and maybe have a topic about this eclipse. You can use all the content on my blog any way you like. And if you like my blog, you can mention my name and the fact that I am a Romanian, so all those globe heads will stop saying that only dumb Americans are flat earthers. I don't think they're saying that. Many thanks. Keep up the great work you do. It is as important as flat earth street activism, if not more. Regards, Julian. Thanks, Julian. Good stuff. All right. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark. Hello. 
How are you doing? My name is Daniel, and I just watched your video on YouTube, and honestly, it's hard for me to grasp that the Earth is flat, and at the same time, it's very mind-boggling. I really don't know where or how to start this investigation research, and ask, can you please point me in the right direction? Thank you for your time. And he still didn't put a period at the end of it, sent from his iPhone, where apparently he does not believe in periods. And I'm pretty sure I sent him the flat Earth short list for new people, which you guys can look that up on YouTube. It's just a, a playlist of all the, the best introductory Flat Earth videos that I, I tried to compile. And I don't think any of them are, my, are mine. This one's called... Oh, boy. Question for you about God's motivation in creating a Flat Earth instead of a round one. Mark, sorry to send another email, but as a follow-up question, I guess what I'm asking is why. Why would God make a Flat Earth rather than a round one without a dome and then give us the capability to go beyond it so humans would have to lie about it? Just, uh, okay, let's answer these questions. There's a lot of question marks here, so let's let's go through a couple. Um, who who says that we went beyond it? You, the only it's the illusion that you have the capability to go beyond it. Then that's why they're going to lie. And if the authorities are lying, then why would all the astronomers and astrophysicists also be lying? They're not lying. They don't know. Wouldn't it be easier just to tell the truth and to make up this elaborate hoax? No, it wouldn't. Uh, so they can hide God from us. Yes. Why? Why would they hide God from us? If you have to ask me that, I don't even know if I'm going to finish your email. How does a flat earth imply God any more than a round earth? Okay, this is going to be the last part of this. <laughs> it implies it because if it's flat, then it was constructed by something. Especially if it's got a, a dome to it. You know, if you can, you want to push off a, a globe, a little ball that's organic flying through space. That's easier to do. Uh, but if you're talking about a, a flat snow globe that's sitting on somebody's coffee table or a high-tech civilization's laboratory room, that's way easier. And then he's got question after question after question after question. Yeah, and he just keeps, you know, or does any one person come forward evidence that all the galaxies are made up like the... Yeah, he's having a really, really hard time. So, sorry. Can't answer any more than that. Hopefully they've gotten through their journey by then. And let's see here. Testing the glove. Okay. Survival guide. I'll oh, probably get a few. Mark, please send me your survival guide. Thanks, Tom and Georgia. Yeah, if you guys want a free survival guide, it's in PDF format. All you have to do is email me and, and just put survival guide. I want survival guide in the title. You know you have to put anything in the in the body of the email and I will shoot it off to you. It's about 100 pages long, and it's free, and hopefully you're smart enough to print it out once you get it, because if you don't print it out and then the power goes out, well, then you're going to be looking at your phone and trying to memorize stuff, and that's not very efficient. Uh, let's see, any others? Rainbows. This one's called Rainbows. Hello, Mark. I'd be happy for you to read this email aloud and share your thoughts with us on this. I am the businessman from Europe who sent you an email earlier this year, March, I believe. In the past few months, I have followed and investigated the Flat Earth community and its theory daily. What saddens me is most in the current state of the Flat Earth mission is the fact that many good Flat Earthers, Jaron, Dubay, and the likes, are too busy dissing each other. Why would you even waste time on others' opinions when you're still struggling to manifest your own view in the vast majority of the population. It should be the community's primary mission to get the Flat Earth message across rather than trying to discredit others. I totally agree with you on that. Unfortunately, the spirit of competition is strong with the Flat Earthers. There's a lot of people that, that you know, again, you get so enthusiastic with the whole Flat Earth concept that you tend to go after people. And if you have any selfish side to you at all, uh, you know, it's, it's king of the hill. People are trying to knock each other off. Anyway, enough of my ranting. I just am frustrated to see talents like the above mentioned wasting their time on futile issues. Coming to the actual reason of my email, since I was a kid, I'm sure I share this with 99% of the world's population. I've been in awe and mesmerized by rainbows. Now, if I look at them, I start thinking, why is it that every rainbow is shaped like the way they are? What makes them curve like a half circle. Have you ever spent a thought on that phenomena? Well, if you think about the possibility of a he heavenly, heavenly celestial dome, then it would be very logical that the rainbows are shaped the way they are. Why do scientists say the fact that rainbows are curved? Certainly it cannot be by chance because every rainbow is perfectly shaped like a half circle. How come? Water, raindrops don't automatically cause this phenomena to happen, does it? 
Food for thought, my friend. I wish you wisdom and patience in your flat earth path. My best, Guido. Actually, says Guido. Uh, yeah, interesting things about rainbow. We can create rainbows inside, but only if we use water and some sort of reflective surface. So the question is, when you're outside, what exactly is the reflective surface? The other thing is interesting, you can look this up on YouTube, and I think I include one of these videos in uh, my um, uh, collage of videos, which is when you take a helicopter or a plane and you fly above, we can actually get above the center point of a rainbow. It's not just a dome surface, it's a perfect dome. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a circle when you're looking at it from above. It's, it's being projected straight into this, this circle. Uh, it's, it's fascinating, so check that out when you get a chance. This one's called, um, uh, it's called nothing. Hello, Mark. How ironic. I was listening to email 42. Heard that name yesterday. I made a shortcut to this highly reused density and buoyancy test video. I have not seen the, the star on these videos yet. And the video is called gravity disproven in three minutes flat earth. All right. So I'll check that out when I get a chance. Boy, it'd be nice if I could get out of July's videos. I'm in September, I just keep losing ground. This one's called, someone replied to you on ZME Science. Let's see here, Purple Paw required to, re replied to you contradicting fake stories on social media. It doesn't, just doesn't do anything. It may be counterproductive. Um, yeah, he was, he was making my point. Uh, yeah, no, nah, I'm not gonna read it, it's too, too technical. This one's called Alt Reserves at FE 2017. Dear Mark, I spoke to you on the phone here from Atlanta. I couldn't get tickets for the conference, but I'm hoping to come up there and stay at the North Carolina Fairgrounds. They only take reservations for a group, not persons, so bad and good. If all the overflow FE people come there, I too, I may be able to get a good spot, may not be able to get a good spot there either. They say that the place is so large that people come there from from all the time without reservations, but I am finding out what it does take to reserve a spot for a group. We would be the fringe flat earthers. <laughs> uh, I will let you know what I find out if I'm able to do it. Why is this so exciting? Why is it that we want to be part of a movement? Maybe it's the chance to be with like-minded individuals who think. Fond regards, Vicky. And you know what? I'm going to make sure that she also gets the link to the um, to the extra tickets that are out there. Hopefully she's gotten some by now. This one's called Round Pizza. Hello, Mark. I would love to contact one of you from your circle of trust, especially with Daryl, perhaps Rob Skiba. And also, if you're interested, I have a lot of math, optics, and bio experience that can be realistic in our plan T, dash T or not. Please contact me with... Uh, one of you, if they will agree, I can help a lot. Regards, Ladislav. I will try to do that. This one's called Alice in Wonderland. Quote, Sometimes I have believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. That's from the Queen. And Elizabeth says, I wonder if anyone told her about Flat Earth. At least she was open-minded. That's a great quote. Sometimes I have believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. Cool. This one's called Solar Eclipse Impossible FE. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. My name is Adam. I have been a globe head up until about three months ago when I could no longer debunk the flat earth theory. It took a lot of time for my cognitive dissonance to go away and for me to realize the lies in the cartoons we were shown. I wanted to discuss the 2017 solar eclipse coming up in August. It is simply impossible for the shadow of the moon to move from west to east on the globe and at the same time the moon cover the sun from the observer's point of view left and exit on the right according to the globe model the earth spins 27 and some change times on its axis before the moon makes one complete orbit around the earth if this is true then we should never observe the moon from right to left due to being on earth which rotates faster then the moon could overtake the sun. Now let's say for some crazy reason the moon overtakes the sun from the right and exits on the left. The rotation of the earth would then force the moon to move backwards retrograde and create another eclipse on which the moon overtakes the sun from the left and exits on the right. I wish I was a graphics programmer to make a to scale globe model and share it with you but I am not. 
I really hope that you know someone who is capable of recreating what we are told to be true about Earth's orbit and Moon's orbit while the Sun is 91 million miles away so that we can all see how the eclipse is impossible on the globe. Thank you for your time, sir, and I look forward to the next videos and demonstration of the Flat Earth. Sincerely, Adam. Oops. I want to forward that. I want to kill it. This one's called No Subject. Mark, good evening. I had finished watching your documentary on YouTube. I have questions regarding the dome, I think, or whatever theory you described as far as being being man-made possibly. Well, not man-made, but definitely created. Would love to talk or text, even email is fine. I'm new to all this and, of course, have my own thoughts regarding the whole documentary. Anyway, my name is Summer. I am a follower of Christ and someone who questions everything. Appreciate your time to talk with me. I will try to get back to them. Ooh, survival guide. Hey, Mark. I've been a fan for the last two years. Thanks for all you do. Can you please send me your survival guide? Best chi. And I did. This one's called Help. Mark, thank you for calling me today. I listened to your video responding to email messages, so I was greatly impressed and amused. I was the only one you took the time to say, I'm going to call this fool back. <laughs> It does happen. Every once in a while I do call people. So I can't thank you enough. I enjoyed talking to you and look forward to meeting you someday. This will happen in time. I am determined we must meet in person at some time. I'm not a stalker. Nothing creepy, I promise. So I had a deep thought. Do you remember those from Jack Handy on Saturday Night Live? Those, those skits, I'm sure he was trying to say. It's an expedition. I looked up flights from Seattle, Washington to Moscow, and it says that they are roughly 6,500 miles. You could go from Seattle to New York City and then Helsinki and then Moscow. Looking at a flat Earth model, however, it's straight across the North Pole at least half that distance. What if you could travel north from Seattle on a flat Earth map and then curve around the pole and get there on land with a little air time and a little that half that distance of total miles traveled? Documented, would this not prove something? I hope you get your documentary deal or anything good you deserve from your hard work and beliefs. But this, this could be something that could be real. Something as an experiment and a confirmation of how things really are. If you have any interest at all, uh, even in this concept of my idea, let's do it. I will be your co-pilot all the way. I'm working on this brevity thing because I am told and I know I can't be verbose. Think about it. No stress, no worries. And yes, I will keep it flat. Thanks. Peace, David. Cool, David. And I will absolutely think about it. This one's called H3H3 Talks Flat Earth on their podcast. Mark, did you know that H3H3 Productions of Ethan and Hila, Hila, H-I-L-A, Hila? We're talking about Flat Earth on their podcast today. That was July 28th on Twitch. Just thought I would mention it because they have four and a half million subscribers on YouTube. Segment starts at two hours, eight minutes, four seconds. Till then, Justin Cabell. I did know this and I'm pretty sure I reproduced it. This one's called Moon Landings. Hello, Mark. Just wanted to share an observation I made about the alleged moon landing videos from the 1969 uh, and onwards. We, were, we are told that the gravity of the moon is a sixth the strength of the Earth's gravitational pull. They purportedly, that purportedly explains the floating tendency of moonwalkers. One day I jumped from the cabin of the truck I was driving and landed on some dirt and a puff of dust flew up. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. I th suddenly thought, why didn't the dust on the moon go flying six times higher than it would on Earth when Neil Armstrong jumped on it? Never heard that explanation. What do you think? Kind regards, James Wheeler. And James is absolutely right. One-sixth gravity means that a 180-pound man would weigh 30 pounds on the moon. If you weigh 30 pounds and still have the muscle strength you have now, your vertical jump would be amazing, even with a spacesuit. You'd be able to lift things like giant rocks you would be able to lift the moon rover with one hand. It would, you know, every, all these things would be amazingly easy to do. You could throw objects a long, long, long way. We never saw feats of strength. Where are the missing feats of strength on the moon? They're not there. They should have been there. In fact, you know one of the easiest feats of strength? Fine, you don't want to lift, lift a moon rover. You, you don't want to lift a, a rock or anything like that. You could lift the guy next to you. He's probably 180 pounds. You could lift him 30 pounds, 30 pound weight. Both hands, in fact, one hand, you should be able to do it. Easy, easy stuff. Never saw it. This one's called Jason. They actually just put his name. It's not, and of course, that doesn't matter. Uh, Mark, a debate w with above mentioned Jay, oh, Jay Lizzle. 
Jason Lizzle would be a great one. If an arrangement could be made, also according to information given by science, no sense can be made of the stated fact that we never observe any so-called parts of the dark side of the moon. It is obvious the moon being its own light, not reflecting sunlight as a flat surface. Would appreciate a response. I know that you see this email. Thank you. And that's from Mark Kenyon and Dunnellan, Florida. Well, hopefully, Mark, you were listening to this. This one's called Search. Hello, Mark. I would love to contact one of you from your circle of trust, especially... Oh, wait. This is the same guy. Another guy that said, hey, I want to talk to some higher profile flat earth guys. He sent it to me twice on separate diff different days. I didn't realize it was doubled up. Didn't This one's called, didn't know if you saw this from Rob Skiba's website, Testing the Globe. It's from testingtheglobe.com. Theodolite Moon and Theodolite Moon 2 PDFs. You can do a similar experiment with multiple people to prove no curvature. Be blessed, Mickey. Yeah, if anyone uh, that's into chapter and verse wants to check out a fantastic website, go to testingtheglobe.com from Rob Skiba. This one's called North Korea. Mark, Sunday morning, Good Morning America, reports that North Korea can hit the U.S., and that they used a flat earth map. Why is our defense system located in Alaska? I know because it is closer to Asia than our west coast. Rick. Thanks, Rick. That's good. We might make it to the beginning of August with our emails. If I keep cranking out these short ones. This is called just no subject. Hey, Mark, how are things? Have you noticed Math Powerland's latest vids? I checked them out thinking they were going to be like interviews and stuff, but they're horrendous. It's painful and awkward to watch has he finally lost the plot or just out of ideas I don't know what's going on with Matt to be honest I've done everything I could to promote him in early stuff given him every chance to take the reins on, on a lot of this I mean every producer that I've talked to literally every producer that I have talked to from the the summer of 2015 until now they have all asked about him because he's interesting to watch he's, he's interesting on camera he always has been and he's, oh yeah, do you, do you know how to get, old, get a hold of Matt? And when they try to track him down, he's he's just gets angrier and angrier. In fact, the, the most recent one, when they contacted him, he, because they were saying, oh yeah, we're putting together a documentary and we're, we're trying to interview people. And his response literally was, why are you interviewing anyone else? This documentary should be about one person and that's me no one else should even be involved in the project. It's like, wow, okay. So I don't know if I'm going to be recommending anybody to Matt anytime soon. This one's called What's After the Public Disclosure of Flat Earth. Mark, good day to you. Thank you for all the work you've done to build this movement. I've been on the Flat Earth Trail <clears throat> for over two years. As a preacher, currently not pastoring a church, I see the Flat Earth Movement as part of a larger issue apocalyptic end times. I believe that many of your supporters believe in end times, prophetic events as described in the Bible. Rob Skiba is a good example. These folks believe that there is a grand deception ready to be launched on the Earth's population. My belief is that Flat Earth will become mainstream someday, but not too soon. I believe that the powers will try to censor the work of Flat Earth on the Internet. If that effort is not successful, they will try to bring in the extraterrestrial element, like Star Trek, to introduce these atmospheric entities to us so they can help us fix our screwed up Earth with the Flat Earth cosmology as a backdrop. The false messiah could be the orchestrator of a new science, and he will build a new worldwide truth effort that allows for the end of religious persecution and so forth. A third Jewish temple will be a part of that work as well. The work being done since 1993 at Mount Graham in Arizona points to some effort among the religious elite to communicate with these entities. The Bible refers to these atmospheric entities as the watchers. The prophet Daniel speaks of this in his book, so we know there are good watchers and bad ones. Jesus prophesied about this when he publicly stated that he saw Satan cast out of heaven and a third of the stars came down with him. The most likely is a satanic work and plan to deceive the entire earth. The reason I share this thought with you is to encourage the Flyers community to continue to build local relationships as they currently are so that if when there is censorship, we all will be able to continue to build the movement on a local level. In the end, the movement could become a way to protect people from widespread persecution. The work of sharing 
housing, homegrown food, water, etc., would be one protective benefit of the Flat Earth Movement. These things are part of a larger end time work to gather people who are awake to see through the deception and thus find a way to survive. I hope this painful part of the process is further out in time, but with all the talk of the rapture in 2017, not my view, uh, by some we know that something big is about to break. All the best, Jonathan Keener, North Carolina. Interesting, John. This one's called Blue Whales Flat Earth. Mark, I'm not going to lie to s and say I'm for sure that the earth is flat, but I will say that it all makes sense. However, I remember watching a documentary a few years back about endangered species, and they were talking about how they would track the blue whales until they got to Antarctica, and they would just disappear. Uh, about it kind of blew my mind. I have not seen this documentary. That they could track them to their breeding grounds, because you know the world was a globe, but there would be no reason that they wouldn't just swim through to the other side or something. So anyways, blue whales, bro. Blue whales. <laughs> and he actually paused with dots on that one. That was, that's awesome. But how they could track them until they got to Antarctica. That's interesting. Somebody look that up. That, that you can't track uh, whales past Antarctica. Like, no, I've never seen that before. And I'm a little sad I didn't read that email till now. Uh, this one's called Gravity's Evidence Toward a Spherical Earth. Hi there, physics major here, and I'm just stumbled across your podcast and YouTube. I just want to discuss how the laws of physics, oh boy, strongly suggest not only that the Earth is not flat, but that it can't be flat. You have to accept one thing, though. Gravity is real. Gravity is the field or indentation, if you want to think of it that way, of space-time. If you don't accept that already, ignore the following paragraph, and we can discuss that particular topic. If you do accept gravity to be a real force, then continue reading. And he gives literally the breakdown of gravity. That's from Skyler. Well, uh, gravity, tell me exactly. Yeah, and it's just some math here. It's like, um, it, even Neil deGrasse, Tyson, Neil deGrasse Tyson, when he was interviewed, he said this multiple times, where he said, nobody can tell you what exactly gravity is. He can only tell you what it does. So, no. I'm not going to read the rest of that because you're quoting physics you're saying well because of gravity gravity literally is the reason why you believe in a globe nope and there's another person telling me that h3 h3 productions mentioned it yep already got that i am not gonna make it to the end of july videos but that's okay this one's called under the dome good day mate i just found your video i know uh it's old but i am 257 just getting into this technology i think it's great i just want to say good on ya mate from all the way down under truth truth's protective layers cheers luke australia thanks luke this one's called film mentions flat earth hey mark i was just at the movies here in germany watching the german version of the film trespass against us and they mentioned casually at least five times if not more the world is flat i bet you you can find it on youtube it's called trespass against us uh, if you find it, you can put it up in your channel. Just don't mention my name. I would like to remain anonymous. And is well, yeah, we'll just call him Matt. <laughs> How's that? That's what we'll do. This one's called Quick Question for You, Mark. Now we're going to come down to like, what can we end the show on? Quick Question for You, Mark. If NASA or SpaceX offered you a free ride to the ISS to put an end to this flat Earth debate, would you be willing to go? Yes, I would. Wouldn't it be worth the investment for NASA to send one of the most popular people in the Flyers community to the ISS? Well, yes, it would, unless that person couldn't be bought or bribed or threatened or like me. Some, there's nothing they can do in this case. I'm, I'm, I'm older. I never had kids. I never got married. There's not much leverage they can they could use against me. No, they're not going to try to even fake me going to the ISS. Never ever going to happen. I, and if they approach somebody else in the Flyers community, I'd love to love to see it course that person would have a tough time and plus they'd be out out of the flat earth community as soon as they went up in it i uh, might come to this at some point that will they will give up and send you up there to help put an end to flat earth you should put an offer out there to nasa or spacex to send you to space for free hmm. they can offer all they want not gonna happen that's what's called the throne of god hey mark thanks for the work and interviews very insightful where do i download the throne of god paper I would like to read it, Doug Schnell, and I think I sent it to him already, and that is who he wants. It was one of my guests that I had on Strange World. 
uh, earlier in the year where he had written up a physics paper and it was called actually it was called harmony but i think he called it in the interview he called it the throne of god so if anyone wants it you can email me at m sergeant 23 it is not light reading by any stretch it is some pretty heavy heavy stuff but i would not try to drink and read it at the same time uh, let's see if there's anything else here got a couple minutes left this one's called Interesting by Joseph Mark. On September 11th, 1939, Cruz and assumed command of the 65-year-old crew Bark Barkentinel, the USS Bear. Bear participated in the United States Antarctic Service Ex Expedition under the command of Rear Admiral Richard Byrd, a renowned av aviator and explorer who led the government financed uh, expedition to evaluate the economic and military value of the Antarctic continent. Navy records state that a thousand miles of new coastline was discovered by survey missions by the Bear and aircraft. After the expedition, Cruzen was commended by Secretary of the Navy Frank Knox for superior seamanship, ability, courage, determination, efficiency, and good judgment in dangerous, in dangerous emergencies. Cruzen was the only one of 16 members of that expedition who received the United States Antarctic Expedition Medal in gold which was presented November 1946. Hmm. All right, then. And... Huh. Interesting. Let's see if there's any more I can do here. I got... Let's do one or two more. This one's called FE Remote Viewed and Psychics. Hey, Mark, do you happen to know if the Flat Earth has been remote viewed? If not, why not? And who would? I think that'd be an interesting experiment. Are there any psychics or such who have received messages about the Flat Earth from the other side? I've never heard this point of view on Flat Earth, and I'm curious to see what evidence may exist. What is the metaphysical take on Flat Earth, in your opinion? Thanks for all you do, Sam. Uh, you know what? Let's end it on this one, because it's kind of weird anyway. When it comes to remote viewing, I think the system is so well designed that even a simple remote viewer isn't going to be allowed to penetrate it. Because why would they? You know, there's protocols in place here. If they've just if a remote viewer could get out and it's like, wow, I don't know why they keep saying it's a globe. It certainly looks flat to me. Then uh, that remote, you know, then enough of those remote viewers started talking about it. Yeah, it would it would create too many ripples. So I think basic level remote viewers can't see it. Now, if you I, I've got kind of a bias though, because if you went in knowing that it's flat or believed it was flat, maybe that would change your mind. Maybe that would change your perception. I have heard of remote viewers recently saying that it's flat. So look it up. Just type in remote viewing flat earth into YouTube. You should be able to find it. Anyway, that all being said, thank you guys for emailing me. Remember, you can send them to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And I will try to respond to them as fast as I can. I know I've been really busy, and uh, but you have not been forgotten. I keep these emails in a queue, and I try to filter them out as, as best I can. So uh, but we'll, we'll get through them one way or the other. And that's about it. So until next time, stay flat. <laughs>